Okay, uh, bye week. Positive. Uh, I believe it was productive for the travel squad and also very productive for the young kids in our program. The developmental young men had a full week of uh, their normal lifting, and, and we got them out and scrimmaged them twice. And uh, it was great to get those kids on film. And it's great to evaluate. It helps us uh, for their moving in the right direction and it also helps us from a recruiting standpoint to see exactly where we believe those kids are sitting right now so uh, overall productive week got a little bit of a jump start on Hawaii and then got the kids out of here on Friday morning we had an early morning workout on Friday morning and uh, after they're done with classes and they got a day and a half off where they're back here for study hall so good week uh, Hawaii overall is uh, you know a very good football team we, year in and year out, one of the top three teams in the league, and that's exactly where they sit right now. Uh, very productive uh, overall as far as uh, through the years as a, as a football program. So you know what you're getting yourself into. The quarterback is a very talented young man. Uh, offense is always a high-powered offense with, without question. And uh, defensively, uh, their, their numbers would state that they're a physical, powerful defense, which they have been for the last few years. And and uh, have done a nice job. So it's a, it's a great challenge for us. Our kids are excited about the opportunity to go over there and play without a doubt. We're excited about this football game, and we expect to go to Hawaii and play well, and I'm sure Hawaii expects to play very well on, the, on their home turf. So it should be a, a very good football game. And, uh, again, like I say, we're, we're excited to get out back out to practice today and start the week of preparation. What happened up in Moscow to them? Offensively? Game. No, it was a very, it was, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was a low scoring game. Um, you know, uh, Idaho uh, did some good things, obviously, on the defensive side of the football, and it was, uh, it's a different game when you sit back and you watch it, and every game has its own personality, and uh, there was kind of opportunities missed on both, by both teams in that football game without question, and, uh, you know, Hawaii found a way to be able to win it at the end, which, a good team does regardless of, of where it sits and obviously every week you want to score points and play well on offense and you want to shut people down and play well on defense but at some point a good team is uh, defense is going to have to win a game for them offense is going to have to win a game for them and in this case obviously the, the defense played well enough to win the game and offensively it's not a typical scoreboard for Hawaii still threw the ball relatively well kind of went up and down the field and got in the red zone and had to kick uh, some field goals so that was really the difference I think that uh, in the red zone Idaho was able to make some plays, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, Hawaii found a way to win. Idaho's defensive front put on some pretty good pressure, mm -hmm. and they and they got after it. And it. Seems like with Hawaii, sometimes you can't because they deliver the ball so fast, and, and they did a good job of that. Yeah, they did. They they got to the quarterback and. Uh, at time, we're able to get some sacks, which is big, and you know their uh, their ability to get the ball out quick is a big part of the offense, and you know, that's everybody's part of a big part of the offense in the throw game is to get it out and get it out in space and let the, the, the playmakers make plays. So, uh, but uh, you know, I thought Idaho played very well, very well on the on the defensive side of the ball and made some plays when they had to. Uh, we're able to get out some third downs, which was big for them. And, Mixed some pressure at times and dropped out into coverage at times. So they they did some they did some good things, but they were able to get to the quarterback and uh, uh, and play well. Which is you know that Idaho team is uh, they're battling. They're they're tough minded kids, and it's been a, obviously a hard year for them. But uh, they they put their best foot forward on defense in that last game without question. Speaking of defense, you just notice how many guys on Hawaii have made plays defensively in their front group. They have a ton of guys who have sacks. They have interceptions all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got a really active defense, don't they? They do. Yeah, they, you know, they're aggressive on D. I shouldn't say they're a really an aggressive as far as a mindset of blitzing or what have you, but they're an aggressive mentality on defense. I think they're, they have very good players. Uh, I've known a couple of those kids on the front since they were pretty young so you know it's uh they're they've been good football players since uh probably when they were coming to the all poly camp when they were 10 and 11 years old it seems like and supposed to be 15 or 16 to be in the camp so um very good players and uh, uh you know they're gifted they play hard i think they're coached very well on the defensive side of the ball uh, big stout physical kids on the inside that uh you know, our, our next level defenders, in my opinion, I think that a couple of those inside tackles are very, very talented. And but they do have a bunch of kids that make plays, and they love the game and fly around, and play hard. So it's outside guys are really athletic mm -hmm. for them. They're yeah. outside guys. You know, they, you know, they, they're going to sit in. They're they will. They, yeah, exactly. And they'll mix it up now. They'll they'll bring some pressure on you, and uh, 
you know, a couple years ago when we went down there, they ran some circus stuff on us. But their linebackers are active. Uh, their safeties are very good football players. I think they read in and out of schemes very well. They're a, you know a quarters based defense, and uh, but they they zone blitz out of it. They zero blitz out of it. And they have they have patience uh, at times, but they also load it up and get pretty aggressive with you. So I think it's a it's a very good mix on the defensive side of the ball, and and uh, again, I think they're they're well coached. Moniz, how special of a player is he, and how difficult is he to prepare for? Well, he's 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 what you want as a quarterback. You know, obviously he can throw it very well. I think he's got a tremendous mind. Uh, you just see him scan the defense pre-snap. Uh, he does a nice job of uh, making you kind of you know hold your cards up in the air and say this is what we're doing pre-snap wise, which is uh, a good quarterback does. And so that's a, that's a big step for us to try to hold things off as long as we can with him. But he throws it well. His mind is good. He can hurt you with his feet. Uh, also, which he's uh, shown time and time again. I uh, can't remember the game back in my mind right now. Uh, maybe it was San Jose. I can't remember. He ran for like an 80-yard almost. Uh, so he's, he's, he, can, he can do it all. He's the, he's the uh, whole package. And the other thing is, is he's, he can live to the next down. You know, If it's not there... Very few times you see him just, oh, I got to get this on this play. He's he's patient enough to get to the next snap and say, okay, they did a good job defense. We'll we'll come back and, and play the next down, which is another sign of a mature and a quality quarterback. We say about the receiving core. I mean, they have Pollard and mm -hmm. the two-way guy that plays basketball. Yeah, they're 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 talented at the wide receiver core, and they always will be. You know, they they spin it around, and um, he does a good job of getting the ball to them. So they. Uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna throw it like crazy, and you got to do a good job of understanding that Hawaii's gonna make plays at times, and you got to make enough plays to be able to to get out of drives, and uh, that's that is the bottom line. The ability to get down the field is one thing, and ability to score points is another. And uh, if you look back at the Idaho game, that's kind of what uh, Idaho was able to do at times. They were able to get into those situations in the red zone and and uh, execute on defense and get out of drives. Without giving up all your secrets defensively, do no you, secrets. Do you anticipate playing an extra defensive back all the time with all their wideouts, the way they line up and things like that, too, or what? Yeah, at times you definitely will match at times with uh, skill with skill, and um, down to you know three corners. We have to make sure we get our best people on the field, and and uh, but we will want to be able to mix into uh, a lot of nickel, which will. You know, take one linebacker basically off the field for us because you still want to get those two safeties to play in the game. And so we'll be in a position to play, uh, take a linebacker out of times and put another nickel in there. And really that, what the packages that we go into, sometimes we'll play four corners. Uh, it just really depends on the personality that the game takes. But we'll have all those packages with us when we when we arrive. You, uh, I got the feeling reading from uh, Wade's article on with Walter and when I talked to you at the press conference last Monday when we talked to you, the players kind of, took over some of the meetings and did a few more things. Do you anticipate that, that I mean, the, the players are, how do you feel, how do you read that of your guys starting to maybe do some more things during this bye week to try to talk to each other as a team and things to try to turn things? But I think it's good. I, I didn't read the paper. I never read the paper. Sorry, Wade. Right. That's just kind of one of my deals. Um, but uh, I think it's great for the football team. I think it shows leadership and I think it shows development. Uh, you know, if, if, if you sit and it's one thing to sit and talk about it and uh, amongst yourselves and amongst your friends or your couple buddies at Locker next to you or what have you, but it's another thing to get up in front of a football team and tell them what you really feel. And I think that uh, we're, we're starting to do that. And, you know, we should be. I mean, we, we should be bowed up as a football team. And we shouldn't be real happy about the, the scenario where we sit and, you know, five times taken into the fourth quarter. And, and uh, a lot of this game... Uh, that threatens a lot of what you are or what I believe in you should be as a football player with your toughness, uh, your mental abilities to fight through adversity and all this stuff. So if, if you don't bow up in that situation that we're in, then you know, you're know you not a leader, number one. And number two, you probably should find another game to play. So I think it's great that those young men are stepping up and, and uh, want to voice their opinions. And I think it's coming from the seniors, and I think it's trickling all the way down to you know some freshmen and sophomores and some transfers that are in here, and, and it's great to see. It'll it'll help us in the future, and hopefully the future is comes this Saturday. What do you mean by they run a they run a bunch of circus stuff? 
Uh, you know, so the radar defense, basically. If you remember two years ago when we were there, they stood up and they played zero pressure and had 11 guys standing up and came from all over the place and did different things. And um, that was, uh, that's what I call circus, circus defense when, when we've called it in the past. But, uh, you know, so they, they do everything on defense. I mean, they'll, they'll go to a drop eight scenario and they'll bring six or seven. And so I think that, uh, you know, David does a good job. He's, he's their defensive coordinator. I think he, he handles the, the uh, situation real well, and I know a couple of years ago Greg turned it over to him, and I think he's uh, he's handled it well and done done a nice job of, of calling their defense. Um, I think the bye week was successful. I think we got a lot of a lot done. We got a head start on Hawaii, which is always a good thing because they're uh, they're a good team. So I'm looking forward to playing them this week. What were some of the things you accomplished during the bye? I mean, did you guys focus on certain areas or? Uh, defensively, we uh, focus on just tackling and and uh, getting a, a hang of their offense. You know, jump starting the offense because it's a pretty complicated offense. But uh, I think we're doing a good job getting it down. Sound like there uh, there was more even mental stuff going on in the in the bye week. Besides, I mean, as far as talking to everybody and trying to get the team all together again. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but meetings and some mm -hmm. things that you guys did as a team more even than with the coaches and things. I definitely feel uh, we also worked on our mental side. You know, we just came together as a team. We understand that, you know, we've been in some tough situations this year, but we also know that, you know, we got a lot of games left and, you know, if we win them, we can still possibly reach our goal. So that's the base. That basically was the focus, you know, just staying positive. Did you meet as a whole group or just individual? Like your linebacker core, both. Um, both. We uh we met with you know as a whole crew. We also met as you know individual sets of groups. You know, make sure everybody's on point. You think guys were there guys on the team that were starting to lose a little faith because of all these fourth quarter deals that were going on? Do you think probably? Um, I'm pretty sure it was because it's you know it's never a good situation when you know you keep coming up short. But you know. All of our guys are focused, and we're ready to play and ready to get some more wins under our belt. It hasn't been, as I think back these last couple of years, especially with Coach Anderson, Hawaii hasn't been a good game defensively for the Aggies. They've been able to get big plays and kind of do what they want to do mm -hmm. offensively. So how do you change things against an offense like that that's so wide open and predictable but still hard to handle? Yeah, I, I think you just focus on the little things this week, focus on making sure you – you drop, you know, seven yards, ten yards, you know, focus on the little things. I think that was our, our big thing last year. We didn't really focus on the little things, and they kind of beat us. So um, this week and the bye week we used to focus on little things. Do you, in your position, do you, like, watch the quarterback's eyes, or, or do you focus in on him a lot in their system, or – do you have specific places that you have to go? Is that what you're saying most of the time? Or do you watch what Moniz is doing and decide what you're going to do? Or? Yeah, I definitely feel like uh, he looks to where he's going to throw. But, um, you know, he's a he's a good quarterback. He's good at looking at every option on the field. Like He doesn't just have one guy he throws to. He throws to the whole side of the team, I mean the whole uh, field. So, you know, you just got to make sure, again, focus on the little things and make sure you know exactly – you know, by formation and film study, know what he's going to do or wants to do on that particular play. And he's a good runner. Too. A good runner. He's he us. Mm -hmm. He didn't last year much here, but the two years ago over there, he, he ran really well. Yeah, we just got to get in get in the skin, really. Just, uh, you know, make sure, take away one aspect of his game. If he's, he can't hurt us both. Did you see the Idaho film? I seen the Idaho film. What, what did Idaho do? Um, I, I just think, I think they got after him. Uh, I think they blitzed him a lot, um, made him step up in the pocket rather than run out. But, you know, he still pulled off the win, so got to respect him for that. You know, the bye week went on very well. Um, we knocked some of the kinks out of our offense and our defense got um, prepared very well. We didn't uh, take it lightly. Um, we know we have a, a good opponent that we're facing this week, Hawaii. Um, putting the new wrinkles in the offense. Um, but at the same time, we're still running the ball as we uh, as we planned from the first from the beginning. Uh, Hawaii's pretty good. Uh, we run like a 4-2. If we uh, load the box, eventually 
run a 4-3, um, bring the safety down. But at uh, the same time, we just got to execute our assignments and plays plays that uh, Coach Baldwin uh, calls out, and it'll be work out very successfully. Because they're statistically another decent run defensive team. Maybe some of that's because they've been ahead or, you know, team they score so easy, teams don't run as much against them. Like Louisiana Tech was a good assignment running the ball, weren't they? Yeah, they did. Uh, last two. Yeah, um, they would run um, stop defense too. Pretty, uh, we didn't know they were, well, I didn't know they was going to be that close to uh, the line. The linebacker was like basically on the line and just confusing us, confusing me. And But that's, uh, that was my fault. I need to watch more film and uh, prepare more and expect that now because I know we have uh, three great um, running backs. So everybody's going to load the box. So we just need to uh, um, watch our. Uh, Watch film more, um, um, learn from our coaches. Coach uh, Tuyaki uh, teaches how to um, break um, arm tackles and stuff, and we need to execute um, our plays, and, and that's we should win the game. Because against a team like Hawaii that can score fast and things, you're, you put together these long drives, being able to run like you guys do offensively in some games could really help out in this game to keep the ball for a little while and stuff. Oh, yes, yeah, long drive, 15 plays, 14 plays, take a lot of um, – Give our defense a lot of rest and and focus and let them focus and catch their breath and just keeping the ball in our hands, running the ball, getting first down, converting converting on third downs is a big um, key for us and just keeping the ball in their hands is going to be a very uh, helpful for our defense and our whole team. I don't, I don't know if we've had you at that. Have we asked you about Chucky playing with the, the freshman quarterback? What if, what, how's he impressed you this year? What have you liked the most about him? Oh, energetic. Uh, um, he had a lot of energy uh, coming um, coming from a high school t- um, to a D1 level. It's a, it's a big uh, step for him, but he has uh, accomplished a lot for us. Um, learned a lot. Um, wants to learn. It's like a sponge. He's soaking in everything. So, uh, and he's and he's willing to to learn. So, it's a, he's a great great quarterback. Um, he sh- should be, should be, in a couple of years, should be the one, one of the um, great players on our team in the future. Right now, um, all we, all I ask him to do, in my opinion, just to manage the game, don't make uh, no mistake. Um, me, Turbin, and Curl will, will carry load, will carry the load for him, and so you don't have to make no miraculous play at the end and throw like a deep ball, a hail mary. Um, we'll manage the game for them, so just trusting us and trusting the coaches, what they, and have patience on what they, what our game plan is. But he's earned you guys' respect. How he goes about it, how he's learned things fast and stuff. Oh yeah, he earned, uh, he, earned he earned my respect um, totally. Came in there um, at camp and competed for the job. Best man was job. Coach said put the best eleven on the field, and he was one of the best eleven. So we have no choice but to put him there. So he earned my respect. Is his demeanor in the first game at Auburn versus the midseason now changed a lot? I mean, is he, were his eyes wide open the first game, or has he been the same all the time? Uh, well, the first game he was excited starting, you know, like any any quarterback or any player starting um, in their first Division One um, college game as a true freshman. As, I wish I could do that, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, was not meant for me, I guess. Uh, but uh, him, yeah, he's still, he's still learning. He's still not, he's not cocky. He's just being patient and still trying to learn, trying to be a better quarterback for our team and and better leader. Because quarterback has to be a leader at some point. He has to, when the opportunity strikes, stuff he has to step up and uh, accomplish uh, them. So, uh, but like, nah, he's been coming to practice, same, same Chucky. Energetic, high five and jumping in the air, just like a little kid. <laughs> what was behind the uh, number change? And then, did you have any individual goals this year? Oh, uh, the number change from um, 34 to 20. Well, when I first got here, I wanted 20 because my favorite running back is Barry Sanders, but I couldn't get it because a uh, fellow player had my number, but he didn't want to trade with me. So, as soon as it was available, I just took it. And that's my favorite running back. That's the reason why. Uh, Change my number, and my individual goals. I, I only have a couple goals. Uh, WAC champion. I want to go to a bowl game, and 
and help my team out the best I can. That's basically, I don't have no when all the accolades, like first team, second team, but if the opportunity strikes itself, yes, I'll accept them, but I'm not saying I want them. It wasn't so many yards or so many touchdowns? No, it's not no yards, no touchdowns. It's just I just want to have an impact on the team. So um, if the yards came, if, if the, they needed me to run the ball more, they needed me to block more, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I just wanted to win. That's my true goal, win. From what we heard from the coach, are you uh, you were fortunate maybe to come back and play? I mean, and, and now you've done what you've done. Do you have any effects from the, the foot? Does it bother you? Have you had to worry about it at all? No, I didn't. I don't really. I don't have to worry about it. it doesn't hurt no more. It's completely healed. Um, the doctors um, took out, shaved some of my bunion down, and took out, repair my ligaments and my my tendons. And now I run fast, just like I was before. It doesn't feel any different then, are you? Does it change your really much? No, I always ice, so I, I'm always icing. I'm icing my foot, I'm icing my whole body, and it's <laughs> kind of brutal at running back. <laughs> but it's uh, but no, no, I don't feel nothing. It's great. It's very healed. It's healed.